The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve from Botest.com, and today I'm on an all-new launch from Hatteras, the 90 Panacera. Now, the design team at Hatteras told me that they made this to be an ocean-going yacht, but because they've ramped up the technology so much, the boat now works for you instead of you working for the boat. Let's take a look. Now, throughout this video, you're going to hear me referencing the HATCON system. This is a system that has been developed by Hatteras so that everything on the boat can be controlled through either an iPad, Mini, or your smartphone. And when I say everything, I mean everything. From an entertainment aspect, it's the air conditioning, the lights, the TVs. From an operational aspect, the AC systems, the DC systems, the tank monitoring, the fuel transfer, navigation. Now, because everything is so controllable through this system, there are two different profiles, one for the guests and one for the captain. Crew quarters can be accessed from either this transom door or a discrete door in the aft deck. Once inside, to port is a crew stateroom with an over-under berth. Directly across is the head, and this has another access door leading to the captain's cabin. Here we have a queen-size berth with plenty of storage all around. Coming out of the captain's takes us to the central seating area opposite a flat screen TV. And adjacent to that, we have a modest galley with a microwave, plenty of counter space, Below are refrigerated drawers, a single basin stainless steel sink, and storage above and below. And then of course, the steps to the aft deck. As we continue forward, our main AC distribution panel is over on the starboard bulkhead. It feeds power to six separate individual panels, four of which are located right here in the engine room. Let's take a look. And here we have a very nicely laid out engine room. Unbelievable headroom right at the entrance. 6 feet 8 inches and we step down 7 feet 10 inches. At its narrowest 28 inches between the two sets of fuel filters. Two 40 kilowatt generators right at the entrance and of course the focal point. The twin C32 Acerts at 1902 horsepower each. Just an overview of some of the larger items in the engine room. The fans filtered to keep salt water out. Cruise air system providing chilled water air conditioning throughout the boat. Looking at the front of the engines, I can easily see the raw water pickups. I'd also like to see a diverter so that we can draw water from the bilge in the event of an emergency. Main battery switches at the forward bulkhead. Just ahead of this forward bulkhead is the fuel tank providing sound insulation from the master stateroom just on the other side. Over on the starboard side, 1,800 gallon a day fresh water maker. Hatteras worked with making an improvement to this Dometic water maker where it has a programmable logic controller that automatically primes it so when it loses its prime it'll automatically get it back again we don't have alarms going off really cool system I can see the AC pump for the stabilizing fins this gives us our zero speed stabilization and I have to point out this exhaust system look at the high risers plus this massive muffler system this is diverting water down under the boat so we've got underwater exhaust but we've also got soot scrubbers that are giving all our guests fresh air while they're on the boat and we're not getting the bubbling next to the boat plus it's got an added benefit of giving us a full beam crew quarters now the bilge area down below by the staterooms has a lot going on let's take a look the bulk of what's going on down here is water supply and discharge for the heads so water pump right over here here's your discharge line Here's your supply lines. If I follow this down, you've got your pressure gauge right here, a bleed valve so we can let air out of the system. Over to the other side is another water pump and there's an expansion tank just behind. Just under the stairs, some pump for the condensate, manifolds for all five heads so we can shut them off individually for servicing each one. Down below, we've got an AC crash pump and fully forward, the 45 horsepower bow thruster. To both corners of the aft deck, heavy duty bollards leading out to stainless steel rollers. There's room in the front for optional warping winches. Just overhead, cameras that can be activated for 360 degrees through the HATCON controller on an iPad or your smartphone. This boat has a symmetrical layout, so the side decks are the same on both sides. Let's take a look. There are opening side doors to both port and starboard. The side deck space 19 inches between the cabin side and the bulwarks that come up 33 inches. Now, when we get to the midship area, we have a hatch. I can open this up, and it's a storage place for the stairway that mounts to the side of the boat. We talked about the exhaust earlier. The generator is tied into the exhaust system. I can just barely hear the generator running, but more importantly, I have no exhaust smell, no fumes. I'm breathing fresh air, so quiet and clean. At midships, we have another opening side door, and this is where that stairway is going to be mounted. 
Watertight door to both sides. Notice how the bulwarks come up four feet three inches. How's that for safety? Look at this, stainless steel hose pipe with the cleats to both sides. So now we can reach through and tie the boat from the dock. I also like how these side decks are protected from overhead and they have a drip edge so rainwater flows over the side. As we make our way up to the working end of the bow, the rail comes up four feet, one inch. Look at this, an electrically actuated hatch over the windlass system. I've got a 4,500 pound Maxwell windlass, 300 feet of Aculoy hop dipped galvanized chain going out through a chain stop and a stainless steel roller, 140 pound polished stainless steel plow anchor. There's an access hatch to the side so that we can get to the chain and there's a freshwater wash down. Now in this boat, the fuel fill is on the port side and it's kind of a neat setup. First of all, we've got the patented Hatteras vents and you can hang a bucket under there to catch any fuel that might come out of the vents, but that's not gonna happen because we have fuel level indicators so that when it reaches 95%, an alarm goes off, we silence the alarm and then we can slow the process down. And then shut it off when we get to the full point. And of course, all this is connected to the HATCON system, which means that you can be looking at the fuel levels on your phone, so you don't have to be standing right here to shut the fuel off. You can be up at the fuel pump. And of course, this can be on the port side, the starboard side, or both. Now, taking a look at the helm, it's starboard mounted, and honestly, I have seen some well laid out helms in my day. This one seems to take them all and put them to shame. It's really, really well laid out. Starts with four 19 inch displays, and they're all interconnected, interchangeable, so you can put anything on each display that you want. And this system is really where the HATCON controllability starts to shine. Touching HATCON is basically your home page, and we can come up with anything that we want to display on these pages to get to any kind of information we want, and we can control everything on the boat. And when I say everything, I mean literally everything from the lights to the air conditioning to the pumps to the fuel tanks. We can also change anything we want and put it on any display we want just by clicking and dragging so that it comes up however we want. Now this system gets way too involved for this video, but there are some standout features that I do want to point out to you. Simple things like going to something, say, the nav lights. We can't accidentally turn the lights on. You have to make a positive control, and then the lights will come on. Another example, if I went to the lighting control, it won't let me shut lights off in a room that I'm not in for safety reasons, but if I wanted to do that anyway, there is a password that I can override that system in. So safety is built into all of this system. If I were to put, say, the radar on here, notice that I can also move it around. I like having things off-center because I'm more concerned with what's in front of me. I can also pinch to zoom, widen. All of that functionality is there, and it's pretty intuitive. Now, the underlying theme of all of this HATCON controllability is it takes systems that used to have all of their own functionality, and you had to figure out how each one worked, combines it all into one user interface so that everything works the same way. Now, of course, we have an open flybridge layout here, so without these eyes and glass windows, there's weather going through this helm, and for that reason, all of these screens are weatherproof. We still have things that are controllable by switches that you want immediate access to. The search lights, the nav lights, the bilge pumps. Over to the starboard side, the engine controls, the CAT360 joystick, and the interface control for all four screens. So this works much better if you're in a seaway. Instead of having to deal with the touch screens, you can do everything by these touch pads here. Now this is neat, the ignition system. Everything works by these touch buttons. Emergency stop, lift up this lid. There's your stop right there. And we have a fingerprint scanner so we can only have authorized people use it. Obviously, I'm not one of the authorized people. <laughs> Take a look at this steering wheel. Stainless steel, 24 inch, vertically mounted. You can't even see a single weld in this. And it's connected to the electric over hydraulic system so it's programmable. Around the dock, three turns from lock to lock. Underway, it's five turns. The helm seats are from Crown, high back, flip up armrests, Swivel, slide, adjustable for height, and has flip down footrest. The touchscreen interface that we have on the panel is going to be repeated on the arm of the chair. And as well laid out as this helm is, it's only lacking for one thing, beverage holder. So I've always been of the opinion that the bigger the boat is, the easier it is to handle because there are so many systems that help with that handling, and this is one of them, the CAT360. And this joystick seems to be dialed in better than probably any boat I've ever been on. I was able to control this so precisely. 
You still want to use the pulses, but hold the pulse a little bit longer because it's a heavy boat and you need to get it moving. Once you get it moving, then you can back off on the stick and let the momentum take it and then just keep giving it a little pulses to maintain that motion in the right direction that you're going to. And moving the stick sideways brings it perfectly sideways. There's no stern first, bow first that you need to accommodate for. It's dialed in spot on. Now there's a reason why this system is so well dialed in. Normally the ABT thrusters and the stabilizers have their own proprietary hydraulic systems, but in this instance, Hatteras came up with their own system that combines the hydraulics for the thrusters, the stabilizers, and the CAT 360 system, so that's all on one hydraulic system, and that's why it is so perfect, and in my opinion, the best I've ever used. Once clear of the dock, we were on our way. We started out by maneuvering through some narrow waterways that gave us a good indication of how well she handles at low speeds. Soon enough, we were at open water and clear to run. Now, let's start by taking a look at the numbers. The Hatteras M90 Panacera has a length overall of 91 feet 9 inches, a beam of 22 feet 6 inches, and a draft of 6 feet 2 inches. With an empty weight of 230,000 pounds, 90% fuel, and 4 people on board, we estimated our test weight at 254,236 pounds. Now, that most definitely puts her into the heavyweight category, probably the heaviest in class. So why is that? Well first, if we eliminate the fact that she carries more fuel and water than the competition, we're still left with one heavy boat, and the reasons for that are several. They're overbuilt, Hatteras doesn't cut corners anywhere to save weight, and certainly not in the build process. Everything is solid. Even the counters are solid marble, not honeycomb cord to make them lighter. And everything is all in here. The boat includes virtually everything. All items that would be otherwise considered options are most often standard here, and all are included in that empty weight. So with that said, Hatteras had to innovate with its propulsion system to match the prop with the drive, the drive with the hull form to gain back its efficiency and performance. With a pair of 1902 horsepower CAT C32 Acerts turning 54 by 66 pitch 8 bladed propellers, we reached our top speed of 24.7 knots at 23.15 RPM. That makes for 0.1 nautical mile per gallon and that number stays consistent all the way down to 1500 RPM and 10.2 knots. Below that, the range starts to double, and then double again, and then triple. However, for normal operations, most will run her at 80% load, which is the CAT recommended cruise speed. That comes in at 2100 RPM and 21.9 knots. At that speed, she'll burn 169 gallons per hour for a range of 382.6 nautical miles. All while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 3,285 gallon total fuel capacity. Now, we don't normally run things like time to plane and acceleration times with large motor yachts, but Hatteras made a significant investment in time and money in this yacht's propulsion. It not only designed the hull for maximum efficiency, it designed the propellers too. So, we measured a time to plane of this 254,236 pound boat at 10.6 seconds and a time to 20 miles per hour at 55.2 seconds. The Hatteras spent a lot of time and effort into making a well-performing hull, so we need to test her handling, smoothness, and low sound. The first part is easy. To test the handling, I took it from her full speed and spun the wheel hard over. And I found that she'll enter the turn at a level attitude, and then once established into the turn, she'll roll a gentle 7 degrees into the turn. I could feel when the stabilizers kicked in, and they not so much kept the turn docile, but also worked with the rudders to coordinate the turn much like an airplane uses the ailerons and rudder in conjunction with one another. It's definitely a feel that I noticed. As for timing, the turns aren't quick, nor are they supposed to be. We measured our turn diameter at 600 yards, and we came around 360 degrees in 2 minutes 10 seconds, again at full speed. Next, because the systems are so dialed into one another, we wanted to look at the position keeping capability of the CAT360 system. So, all stop, engage the system, and let's take a look. Here, we're zoomed into 49 yards to both sides of the screen. Of course, there's the boat in the center and our track line from where we first engaged the system. The dotted line here shows which way it's trying to move the boat to hold its position against the wind and tide moving in this direction. We're also holding our heading as well as position. For existing conditions, we have winds coming from 181 degrees at nearly 15 knots. And of course, our stabilizers are locked. Disengage the system and we immediately start moving at one half knot and 129 degrees. Now normally this system goes through a Caterpillar interface, but what Hatteras did was work with CAT and twin disc to get the codes and lock that interface in with HATCON. 
So here we have it on the Hatcon screen where we otherwise couldn't if it were a Garmin, Raymarine, Simrad, or whatever other display. Again, another example of Hatcon being one interface. Now lastly, to see how smooth and quiet this yacht is, I did something I never would normally do. Once back up to full speed, I went to where the worst of the sound and vibration should be, right behind the propellers out on the swim platform. First I measured the sound levels, with the wind and spray and engines all doing their worst. I got only between 90 and 91 decibels. I've measured worse on sport boats. Also, that exhaust system is doing its thing. Nothing but fresh air and no station wagon effect. I then fell for vibration. Nothing with my feet, so I went to my hands and found it to be minimal. And there's a reason for this. The deep tunnels and 8-blade propellers are designed for maximum performance and efficiency while also reducing noise and vibration. And as I've seen, it's noticeable. And at the end of the day, these are the things that make a difference. The Hatteras difference. And that's my full performance evaluation of the 90 Panacera from Hatteras. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.